Hi guys, welcome to Operation Exploration. This is episode 18. And in this episode we are hoping to make the Operations Center Room, which will be above the Research Room. Uh, we haven't actually given this a name, have we? Like, no, a nice big sign up there with a name on it. I'm thinking Resource Room? Resource Management Room? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, that's what we've last left off. And I just see the sun... Oh no, it's not sun, it's my lights. I was about to say, I thought that there wasn't welded up, but yeah. Um, actually, just let, leave them off. So yeah, what happened was, in the last episode, we got this room made, uh, and we said that we were going to leave the roof. There's no point really doing the roof at the moment. There's no excitement in it, and we all want to get straight into the operations room. So, let's get up to that floor. It's going to be on. Here it is. And let's grind this here out. And it's going to be in here. Now, to do in here, we're going to copy the same layout that we have below. And I need a quick way of getting up and down here. Because the stairs take too long and the lift is a bit too long as well. So, we know we want to get this here door in. It's similar layout. Now, I didn't show the building process of doing this here whole door. Because I didn't think it was worth putting it in. And, of course, I didn't have my um, second account recording it, so I didn't want to have all that stuttery video again. I want to keep away from that. I want to keep it that all the time lapses will be the second account's um, spectator view. So, uh, all the view I want all the videos to be smooth. I don't want them to be all juddery like the old way we done it. Um, so, let's go on the way. So, that door is five blocks thick, I think. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. So we need to go out five and do that. Now, but the, ho the goal is for this episode is to get this mined out to about the width of the engines that are in the room below. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to mine this here out first. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to mine out uh, using... A small grid ship using a large grid drill or two large grid drills and that's gonna do the whole room that way it's taking more material out and we're not having to you know like expand the edges with the small grid uh, drills they do take a long time just to drill out a room so let's make this a wee bit wider um, there we go and what we'll do is uh, actually go another block higher Let's do this. There we are. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that little ship that I was talking about. Um, it'll actually be one of the existing ships and um, blueprints. We don't actually have them because uh, they kind of fell in the last episode and uh, clearing away the resources up there. But nothing to worry about. They don't take that long to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and load up the projection and um, I just re remember there is no projector up there so we're going to put it over here somewhere so it'll be a rotor with a small rotor head projector on the end of it and build it then we're going to take off a few of these windows take it in here and start mining this here out as we're mining it out um, we can discuss well probably won't discuss anything it'll be all like a time lapse so there's no point really talking about that um, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to knock out them windows now. I don't think there is any projections up, so I think we're okay to do this. So, uh, we're actually maxed out, um, I can see there. So let's, um, do I do know how to actually put a, a con connector there, so let's do that. Uh, so we'll, we'll dump all the stuff. To the base and um, base cc let's dump everything in there and oh, oh yeah I, th I thought i had everything there too all of that and we'll keep we'll keep that there there's no point removing that let's put it there um so we need a five actually we'll put this here instead add that off. get a connector add that to this, rotate around this way, weld. There we go. And let's dump the stuff that we don't need in energy here. Critical. Okay, let's get topped up on energy before we go. So one of the ideas that I did talk about in the previous episode, or episodes I should say, is that the port cabin 
or the portable base will have the rover inside it and what we'll do is we'll blast the whole lot off together land it on the moon and then we control the rover from uh, here now it will take some trial and error and um, so what I might do is I might dedicate an episode to trialing out some design ideas and what I'll do is we'll do that in creative mode so that'll be like our little test environment and we can just see what sticks so we'll just build random stuff fire it up into the sky and see how it performs um, although I might do it in survival you know maybe it's best to have it like that I know in creative mode you're kind of like cheaty you're experiment experimenting with your resources and then you know you're taking them into like survival and then you're you know, building them so there is no actual like survival if you get if you get the scenario like all the stuff is more or less custom there like when I do the stuff in creative mode it's there as a blueprint just to be made in survival but one an element of um what would you say danger like when we go to build all the stuff and test it out like could it blow up in front of us like if we're right in the cockpit will it blow up yeah I think we should move to doing more stuff in survival itself and for that reason I think we should do all the testing in survival so forget about creative mode survival and it means we have to be careful with our resources as well because we're going to be wasting resources you know like blowing stuff up so yeah um there's that okay so we are here let's go back up to the third floor and knock out the rest of the windows and we need let's knock out this whole section here that'll do so let's get that add back in here okay now let's um it would make sense to knock out this wall here and add a another one of these what is that we need interior plates for that there we go and add a connector on the front of that connector and that's going to go on here Add that to the build planner. Chuck this stuff out we don't need. Take the stuff that we need. There we are. There we are. And now we need a. S oh, I just realized that's there. Um, ah, no worries. That's not a big deal. At least we have two connection points. Actually, we might just leave them there. No, they're kind of. This is kind of giving me an idea now. See, doing them at two stages, we could put like a tiny, you know, like catwalk, no door coming out to it, like a wee walk walkway here that means that we can design ships in a specific way that it, they have catwalks so what we do is we dock up like this here we walk out through a front door around the around the door here through various like doors I suppose yeah I don't know maybe it's worth talking about also good news the elevator idea that I was talking about in back like almost been three or four episodes ago maybe coming back so um i probably will, won't announce exactly when but let's just see it's gonna be very very close so i did look online so basically instead of using wheels well you still are using wheels but instead of using like um the normal sort of wheel and suspension you're actually using rotors and small grid wheels to lift um i suppose not lift but to, to use as a lift so what it does is, um, those old columns that we had, the red ones coming up, they're going to come back in. And then we use these rotors and these wheels to lock on to the columns. And then this floor, um, this is where I'll actually test it in creative mode first. I'm not doing it in survival, because if it doesn't work in survival, it's just going to be a huge waste of time. And time is precious. And for the viewers as well because there's not worse than wasting people's time with something that no like big that doesn't work it'd be different with no wee projects with the lunar base that don't work but something that big that would take at least two to three hours that's a waste of time if that doesn't work so um i'll do is i'll import this base into creative mode and mess about with it in there and if it works we'll go with it and if it doesn't we won't but we'll make a smaller scale one that will certainly work um so 
So let's get that little small grid drill I was talking about done. Uh, so what we will need to do is we will need to have a projector somewhere about there on a small grid rotor. So we need some of these. What we need is a rotor. Let's put that here. Right, so let's take a look at this one. So there's the drills there. Now I always said that the drills were too far forward so when you're inside it, it's hard to actually see what you're mining at. So what we might do is we will... Actually yeah, we'll just take them drills off and add the large grid ones on instead. So let's go underway and build that. So we need to connect that side to this here. So all we have to do is bring it back I suppose. It doesn't need to be that far. Nope. There we are. And now let's get the uh, welding ship down and we'll attach that to the conveyor below. There it is. Um, oh, there we are. Six. One, two, three. Let's hop out. Is it in the way? No, perfect. Okay. Once that gets built, we set it to charge and we'll find something else to do while it's charging. So let's build for it. I suppose we'll use the. I'll just get back to the sand. I suppose we'll use the opportunity now to actually take them drills off and then add the large ones on while it's charging. Yes, there we go. Now, let's turn them off so it doesn't build in by mistake. And what we can do is we can take these here off. Now, to add a large grid, uh, if you like, oh, let's actually let's have the charge before we forget. That's off, that's tree, that's charge. There we are. So that's going to charge away. And just in curiosity, how long is that going to take? Fourteen minutes, okay. Let's set a timer. What time is it now? Okay. Um, right, okay, to add large grid drills to a small grid ship, the way I do it is you actually make like a fake point here. So let me get out this here. So we'll just get the stuff that we need and drill. That goes here. There we are, that's more like it. Now let's get that welded up. That's what you're supposed to do. I always make that mistake. But it's easy enough to make <laughs> when you get mixed up. Okay, that sounds like it now. And let's have a look. That's it. And then what we do is. Yeah. Let's get that added on. One and three and six. Let's fly around. And you line it up with it. So it's like adding a rotor part to it. I knew what I was doing, I was like, no, there's something I'm doing wrong here. What am I doing wrong? And we park it there. Hop it out. Now we stand clear, and the reason for that is because this here will jump. You'll see now in a second. Attach. Oh, I forgot to lock it. Let's do, let's detach. I actually don't know what orientation we're supposed to be. Look, it's this way. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why you stand back from things. Right, I forgot to actually lock the rotor. There we are. And that's why you always do clear stuff. I think we would have been cleaned if I was any anywhere beside that. It's been a dunce. I'm gonna go left. F. Uh, I think there's plenty of room. Yeah, it's not gonna 
occupy any grids, so that's okay. Alright, let's get that attached. Why? Rule lock is on. I don't know why I done that. That was really weird. So, what way is it supposed to be? It's supposed to be like... Yeah, it's kind of flipped it up that way. Um, is there a way that I can turn that around? Actually, that's... That's the way it's supposed to be. Okay. Uh, it's probably this here. Stupid thing is probably... Oh my god, it's sapping the energy out of it. Alright, let's get this here sorted. So that's that attached. Let's get this here on. The engines are on. Where are you going? Now, let's get you docked. Seven. Over. Down. Back up. It's a lot harder to reverse when you're pointing backwards because all your controls are sort of reversed. Six. And uh, one and three. F. F. There we are. And let's add another block. Looks good. Let's um, actually lock that before we go. And let's tr take this. One and three. Six. It's a lot Yankee the controls. Let's stop there. F F and let's attach this here. Let's yes, yes, yes. And let's take this here off. There we go. Oh, that's bad. I accidentally hit the cockpit on that. Come on. <laughs> Alright, let's be careful with this. So now we've got large drills. So what we will do is um, connect um, this other account up here now. So we can do the time lapse. Let's see. Zoom in. I'm gonna set this here up. There we are. Let's just move that there out of the way and turn um, the engines off so we don't fry in. So that's ready to go, um, mining in here, so we'll take that in, mine it, and then we can recharge it on this.
So that's it for the uh, build process of the operation room. Um, that took many hours to get built, but all worth it at the very, very end. So I'll give a quick tutorial, um, or I suppose showcase of how everything works. Um, so I had to use these ships to build and dig in the tunnel, but you've seen that in the time lapse. Uh, but it's just a basic uh, control room, so we've got various stages, um, like platforms where you can come and you can view, so like workers can come and see and work on the operators, but although it's just going to be us doing it, um, it's just sort of nice to have a, you know, like a feel to the operation room. So this is the main desk that we'll be using, um, so we can hop in and then just pan the camera up and watch what we're looking. The screens are set up using um, this method. It's really sort of not complicated, but it's a lot better than what used to be years ago. But it's like a tool that um, Keen Software put out where you can convert images into like a uh, monocode and it turns that into like a picture and that's what you see there in front of you. So what this was, I got this off the internet and I used Photoshop to blow out like different canvas size. These screens are 5x5, five five, but what I noticed is that if you are creating uh, an image on display, it's to use 180 pixels by 180 pixels. And then to get it to go across like that there, you open up on Photoshop, you know, like say a 540 by 180 and then you put this whole image on it and then you split it up into 180 size pixel frames and then you just paste them onto this here using the software. This is using um, the battery status script and it's just to sort of give a bit more feel to in here in the control panel and then this is SE solar alignment script. Now there is no solar panels but I just put it there because it's kind of doing something fancy. It's nice to see like text and all like as if it's like troubleshooting text or something. The projections that I have up are various ones that we're using at the moment although there will be some made in the future. Now this one here is the Weldon ship. I think this one here was called Mini Bob or Little Bob which is basically like a smaller version of that one out there um, except it's small scale. This one here is the satellite. So, oh, just start. This one here is the satellite that we'll be putting up. Um, so I suppose it's good to explain if you can see it properly on this here. But this wee ship is the one that's going to be blasting us into space. And the rest of this here, which is what you see, will be built inside uh, the cavity. Oh. Why isn't the guns going off? But you could rightfully hear that slamming. Um, but all that will be getting made in here. Of course, this will be moved up out of the way. We're going to put a set of dedicated builders in, uh, probably under the flooring, that you won't see them. But they can be turned on and off, you know, to build whatever projects we're working on. So the idea is that that we satellite will get blasted off um, from in there up into space. And that's pretty much what it looks like there. This ship is designed to detach using a merge block. So we can take it back down and connect it to the base. And I need to make it like a docking part for it so that it can dock and charge up. At the moment it doesn't. Um, it just heavily relies on like a merge block so we're gonna have to connect like connectors so we can just merge it in to fill it up and um, the rest of the satellite you've seen in episode 14 I believe it is um, it's big enough so it's gonna be exciting to get that up and that's gonna be in the next episode we're gonna be starting to make this because we have this room finished uh, I want to we'll skip this here for now I'll come back to it this one here is um, kind of like fighter buggy that I made um, it's got thrusters in every direction and then it's got two Gatling turrets at the front so it's good to know for like going after enemies shooting them down the only thing is it takes little damn it takes very little to sort of take it out of the air but it's good for like a cheap fighter jet if you get what I mean so it's not too expensive it's got thrusters in every direction it needs and it can be made in bulk very very quickly so we could have like a range of these set up on pods ready to fly out if we need to fight so we just hop into one detach and fly out now this one here is one of the projects that i have been working on for a very very long time um a few years back mainly when i started but this one here is known as the hawk 
and it uses megapixel uh, guns and weapons, kind of like the ones you see um, coming around the outsides of the base. Except these ones here, they do use X3 battery guns. There's one there mounted on top. Now the nose for them is somewhere around here. I don't know why the rejection always goes a bit funny when you move it about. But this here has uh, 12 large thruster engines. It is massive. This is big. This won't even fit in this base, I don't think. Let me see. It might actually fit you know, width wise, but definitely not like nose to back. It would have to point straight up. Um, well, let me see. So that's that anyway. And there's a lot of smaller th thrusters you can see there at the bottom. And that's for keeping it up and panning. Um, there's two large head and thrusters at the front for reversers. And it's slowed down, but it is very, very slow. It is designed to be used in space. It does have a um, jump drive in the middle of it. And we have... I don't know if this is the ver No, I lost the good version. That's right. See, what I forgot was... This went under a restoration as well recently before the blueprints got lost and this one here had, um, I don't think it has it on it, bomb drop doors, no there's none on that. So what you could do is you could fly it and then warheads got welded up and you could drop them through um, what do you call it, doors and bomb uh, ground targets but it's pretty good, it's very very fun. It's good with ship and um, we might make it in the future in space, it is designed to be in sort of space, it does use hydrogen. Um, or we might make a version where it just uses ion thrusters, but something to think about in the future. So that's pretty much it for the operation room. Um, as I said, next episode we'll be starting to make the satellite. We'll fill it up with hydrogen. I'm going to quickly get some ice and make sure that this space is full up on hydrogen because what we'll do is, as soon as we get the satellite built, we want to charge these two up. Well, not charge, we want to fill up these two hydrogen tanks with um hydrogen as quick as possible and get this up as quick as possible and yeah that's pretty much it so that's something to look forward to uh i'll get underway i'm not gonna bother doing the footage for getting the ice because we all know we've all seen us getting ice before so i'm just gonna skip that so next episode we'll be straight into making that uh satellite and we can then finally get on away once we get that done we can finally get on away with doing that porta cabin that i was talking about the one with the rover inside and yeah, I think that will be coming up in the next episodes. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.